about time to begin our service. Let's say we appreciate your presence. Let's stand by the blessing Lord in our midst. Lord, as we come before you, most thank for this opportunity. We ask you bless me that we miss. We pray for those who are sick to receive healing, lost to be saved, for your people to be blessed. Step lifted and encouraged. Find will of God being accomplished within our midst. Your will to be done as we worship you in spirit and in truth. And all that you would do for us this afternoon, Lord, we pray that you'd open up the heavens and shower us with all your glory. Amen. <laughs> I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles, he will Pain is cry, he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn, you'll know a little fire is burning. You'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my past seems drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. may rise and hide the starry skies, but just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles, he will hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in you, and a little fire is burning, you'll find a little talk with Still talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in. No little fire is burning. You'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. found his grace is all complete he supplieth every need while I sit and learn at Jesus feet I am free as free indeed and it is joy unspeakable and full of glory full of And full of glory, oh, the half has never yet. 
I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. A man of Galilee walked through Gethsemane was there he suffered pain and agony for he could see the cross and he could pay the cost it was for you it was for you it was for you, he cried. It was for you, he died. This cup, this cup of loneliness, thy will, Lord, might be done. But God, Beloved Son, it was for you, yes it was for you, no greater gift could he, that he could die for me, and climb the hill. With cavalry, for he could see the cross, and he could pay the cost. It was for you, yes, it was for you, it was for you, he died. It was for you, he cried. This cup, this cup, oh, may this cup pass. Thy will, not mine, be done. By God, beloved Son, it was for you. Yes, it was for you. It was for you, he cried. It was for you, he died. This cup, this cup, may this cup pass. Thy will not mine be done. By God, beloved Son, it was for you. Yes, it was for you. It was for you. Yes, it was for you. The enemy came against me. And he caught me by surprise. I became so fearful, for it seemed I'd not survive. Then God came near me in a way I've never known. He brought comfort to my shattered heart. And a joy that overflows. I've won, I've won. The victory has come. Though the enemy still makes his presence known. I planted my feet in the world. 
fought the battle I've won. Now I know there'll be more battles that come from day to day. Lord, clothe me in your armor as I take up the shield of faith. Lord, you are my stronghold. My heart will not fear. With your word as my weapon, I know victory is near. I've won, I've won. The victory has come. Though the enemy still makes his presence known, I planted my feet in the Word of God. He fought the battle I've won. Now I know there'll be more battles that come from day to day. Lord, clothe me in your armor as I take up the shield of faith. Lord, you are my stronghold. My heart will not fear. With your word as my weapon, I know victory is near. I've won, I've won, oh, the victory has come. Though the enemy still makes his presence known, I planted my feet in the Word of God. He fought the battle. I've won. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He answers prayers. He us with. He didn't have to do it, but he's given us a lot of benefits in life that many others don't have. Amen. Amen. Tonight, uh, you cannot have a penny in your pocket and have the Lord in your life, and you're richer than the richest man in the world as far as things of this world's concerned. The main thing is have the Lord in your life. We're going to stand before him one day, give account of the life we lived while we were here up on the earth. And he'll either accept us or he'll reject us. But if the blood has been applied and we stand before him clean, without sin, 
He'll accept us, won't he? Amen. There's one thing for sure. No sin will enter into heaven. We must be forgiven of our sins that we're guilty of. And we've got to stay clean when he cleans us up. We have to stay clean, don't we? The way to stay clean is just keep coming back to the cleansing power of His blood. Amen. He died upon that cruel tree. He gave His life to set me free. He shed His blood to take away my every sin. He cleansed my soul and He made me whole. Now it's bitter felt the toll, for He loves me, yes, He loves me more and more. Oh, yes, He loves me more and more. That's one thing that I am sure, for He came within my soul now to stay. He took away my every sin And I know He lives within For He loves me, yes He loves me more and more Oh yes, His blood has set me free I'm as happy as can be For He always walks with me from day to day he lifts me up when i am down gives me eternal grace to stand oh he loves me yes he loves me more and more oh yes he loves me more and more that's one thing that I am sure For He came within my soul now to stay He took away my every sin And I know He lives within For He loves me, yes, He loves me more and more Oh yes, His blood has set me free I'm as happy as can be For He always walks with me from day to day He lifts me up when I am down Gives me eternal grace to stand For He loves me, yes, He loves me more and more Oh yes He loves me more and more That's one thing that I am sure For He came within my soul now to stay He took away my every sin And I know He lives within for He loves me, yes, He loves me more and more. Amen. Thank God tonight. Amen for the love of God. That He had so much love for man that He was willing to extend His mercies even when mankind did not deserve it. And when God could have cut man off without remedy, He made a way possible that we all could be saved. Amen. I appreciate tonight the mercies of the Lord. He's a just God, but I'm glad that He's full of tender mercy. Amen. One day he'll be the just judge, though. And when men stand before him, amen, he will judge according to the things that are written 
in the book of remembrance of their lives. And we can take care of things now. And Amen. When we stand before Him, be accepted of Him. But if we choose to live our own life the way we would, amen, want to in the flesh, when we stand before Him, He'll reject us. If there's any sin in our life whatsoever. You know, it's going to be so close. The Bible tells us if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Amen. There's no room for error. Amen. In serving God. Yes, He is merciful and loving, kind and long suffering to us. It's not His will that any man perish, but all should come unto repentance. But there is a day coming when all will stand before Him to give account of the life that they have lived here upon the earth. People may live by their own opinions and ideals and do what they think is right, but it don't matter what we think, it's what the Word of God declares that's going to matter. God don't lower His standard to suit man. Man has to raise his standard to please God. Amen. Amen. And that takes discipline ourselves daily. Amen. Praying in submission unto the will of God in our life. Praying that He, as He examines our heart, Amen. He tries the heart and the reins of man, and He knows the intentions and the desires of mankind. Knows every thought that crosses our mind. Amen. And I pray, God, Amen, that He would sanctify me wholly every day. Amen. They used to stand and testify. You'd hear people say, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, that's saying a whole lot, ain't it? To be saved, amen, sanctified by the washing of the water of His Word and made clean and filled with His Spirit. Amen. Have the love of God abiding in our hearts. A desire to serve Him and live for Him every day like it's the last day of our life. I believe if we live every day as though it would be the last, we'd be pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. If we live so close to Him, amen, that we would fear of doing anything that would offend Him. I believe, amen, that's the kind of life that we live to be pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I was thinking as we look into the Word of God, and you know the Lord, He wants us to remember the price that He paid for us. He wants us every day to acknowledge that if it weren't for Him, we would have no life within us. We would have no hope of a hereafter in the presence of the Lord. Without Him, we would be destined to a place of punishment where that we would spend eternity alienated from God. Amen. But I thank God, amen, today that uh, the Lord has made a way possible that we could escape the torments of hell and that we could have a place in His kingdom and even as much as reign as kings and priests unto God, through and by made possible, through and by the death, the burial and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. If there was no shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sins. A time was in the Olden Testament, a man in olden times and they would yearly come and sacrifice animals to appease God, amen, and to, uh, that He would uh, forgive them of the sins that they were guilty of. But they had to come back year after year after year and offer up sacrifices, not only, amen, for the sins of the people, but the high priest himself would have to offer 
sacrifices unto God for himself and for the sins of the people. Amen. But one time was all it took for our high priest to offer himself as a living sacrifice for our sins. Amen. And he didn't have to continually do it over and over again. When he did it once, it was finished. Thank God. Even as he declared when he hung upon the cross and he committed his spirit back to God, he declared it is finished. The work is done. It is complete. The mission that he was sent for, amen, was completed. Amen. And thank God it's still just as good today, still just as real and still just as needful today as it was the day he hung on Calvary's cross with the blood running out of his body and the pain so intense, amen, that no doubt, amen, it had been hard to fathom the pain that he endured and the suffering, amen, the curse of sin he bore to Calvary that you and I could be freed from that curse, amen. When he died on Calvary, the curse of sin was broken over all those that would accept his finished work at Calvary. Thank God. But I can say tonight, he is alive forevermore. He's not on the cross. He's not in the tomb. But he is alive. He sits at the right hand of the Father as the intercessor for mankind. And he pleads our cause in the presence of the Father and the holy angels. Amen. He speaks for us. Amen. And I thought the time... It was important enough to be included in Scripture when they were stoning the life out of his servant Stephen. Amen. A man full of the Holy Ghost. A man known for great faith in God. Amen. And he, as the life was being beaten out of him, amen, he was permitted to look into heaven. And he said, I saw, amen, Jesus, the Son of God, standing at the right hand of the Father. Praise God tonight. So evidently Jesus stood up in his behalf that day. Amen. No doubt. Amen. He would have intervened, but amen. He saw that it was better that Stephen would come on home. Praise God tonight. And one of these days we're going to pass out of this old world into a better life in the presence of the Lord where we will dwell with him throughout eternal ages. Praise the Lord. Well, the Bible tells us, and Jesus, you know, His actions were an example for us to follow even today. And we remember, amen, His, the breaking of bread representing the suffering, the broken body of the Lord. And amen, the cup when He took and He gave to His disciples Amen. The wine represented His blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. And he said, as off as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Amen. And afterward, He took a, a towel and girded Himself, and He began to wash His disciples' feet as a sign of servitude and humbleness. He was teaching them through His actions that they were not to uh, be served, but to serve others. Amen. And Jesus in His entire life here upon this earth, He went about serving others. He went about doing good. Amen. He went about, amen, comforting the hearts and the minds of those, amen, that were, uh, amen, depressed and oppressed by the devil. Praise God tonight. Those that Satan even had a hold upon them, Jesus would speak and command those spirits to come out of those that were possessed and they were made whole. They were freed. Praise God. I, I thought of the man, amen, when Jesus went into the land of the Gadarenes and he went up into the tomb because he you know there was a man there that needed help. A man possessed 
by many demons. Amen. And the Bible said that Jesus cast those devils out of him. Amen. And this man would have followed Jesus, but Jesus had, amen, other plans for him, and he told him to go back home to his people. Amen. As proof that God had the power even, amen, to cast the demons out of those that were possessed that no doubt people were afraid of this man even to be in his presence. He cut himself and run around without any clothes on because the devil had such a, amen, a hold upon his life. But I can say this, when the Lord gets a hold of a person, he even gives them a good sound mind, amen, that they'll have a mind to think, amen, upon the things that be of God rather than the things of this world. We're to occupy our mind with the Word of God and think upon good things and things that are pleasing to God. You know, you could sit around pondering on bad things, amen, and why it'll get you in such a condition that you can't even, amen, function. And that's just what the devil wants. But when the devil tries to bring bad thoughts to your mind, amen, just pull the flaps of that helmet of salvation right down over your ears, spiritually speaking, and say, devil, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say Amen. You ain't got anything I want to hear. Amen. If I'm going to tune into anything, I'll tune in to what thus saith the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to hear what the Lord has to say. The Bible said in the book of Revelation, as the Spirit of the Lord began to address the churches, He said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. And even in the Gospels, amen, we were, amen, instructed to hear what the Spirit would say unto us. He that hath an ear, let him hear. The Lord would say as he stood to break the bread of life, which was his precious word. You know, people... You know, they would think in a way that when he would speak concerning the bread that it was something that they could take and consume into their body, you know, that satisfy the hunger of the stomach or the belly. Amen. There was a lot of times they was more concerned about where their next meal was coming from than receiving what the Lord had to offer them. Amen. You know, we're living in a time now when they won't even let them, amen, hardly in some places. Some places are letting them go back into restaurants and eat. Others won't. Some of them make them sit outside and eat, and they don't like that either. Amen. But I tell you, people had a hunger for the Word of God, and they would come and sit under the anointed preaching of God's Word. Amen. And they had a hunger in their soul to hear the gospel and they would take that and begin to feast upon it and let the Lord begin to work in their life as He would desire. You talk about a people, amen, that would walk close to God and a people, amen, that have victory in their soul and they wouldn't look at things as a coral man with fleshly eyes and understanding but that they would discern according to the revelation of God's Spirit. You know, the Lord looks at things different than man does. And that tonight, uh, the enemy, he wants us to dwell upon the bad things that's going on in the world. But we're to refuse that and say, I will not dwell upon those things. I will dwell upon what the Lord has declared in His Word that I can have and who I can be in Him. And I'm not, amen, going to get, be so worked up about the goings on to the world that I forget about my relationship with God. You know, we're living in a time that people get awful worked up about things that's going on in the world. Amen. But they need to get a 
sincere desire for God in their life. And you know, even as a nation, except a nation repents and turns unto God, he will never hear from heaven nor will he heal their land until they humble themselves and and they repent of their sins and they acknowledge Him as God and they ask for His help, then He will hear from heaven and then He will heal the land. Praise the Lord. So the Lord is the most important thing, ain't He? You know, the Bible said He sent Peter and John. It was the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It was drawing nigh which is called the Passover, and they uh, remembered yearly, you know, the Passover when the death angel come through the land of Egypt and, and uh, every house in the land of Egypt. Of course, God was uh, uh, sending the plagues because the Pharaoh had hardened his heart and would not obey what God told him to do, and that was to let his people go, that they may worship him. And his heart was hardened. And but uh, the last, the last plague that was sent was the plague of death upon the firstborn of every household. But God told his people what to do to escape the death angel, that he would pass on over their house when he saw that the blood had been applied to the doorpost or the lintel of the door, amen, of that house. He would pass over that death would not visit that home. Well, I'm so glad tonight to say, amen, in a spiritual sense, the blood has been applied to the doorpost of my heart. Thank God. Because one day I asked Jesus to come into my life and to please forgive me because I wasn't worth nothing. Amen. I was a sinner and I was lost and I didn't deserve anything the Lord could offer me. But I pleaded His mercy and the Lord say, Amen, forgive me of my sins. Uh, amen. And He wrote my name down in the book of life. And you know the only one who can take it out is me. The devil himself cannot take my name out of the Lamb's book of life. Just me. Is that I have to guard my heart every day against sin. Amen. And plead the blood of Jesus. Well, the Bible said he sent him. Amen. Peter and John. And he said unto them, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat that we may remember when the death angel passed over every house where the blood had been applied. And it took the sacrifice of a little lamb, amen, without spot or blemish, amen. And the Bible tells us, amen, when the death angel would see the blood, he would pass over. Praise God this evening. Well, the Bible said that they said unto him, where wilt thou that we uh, prepare? At, well, the Lord already knowed what he wanted done. And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. They tell me in that time that the women went carrying the pitcher on their head. The man didn't. So when they seen a man going down the street with a pitcher on his head, that was a sign that's the house where the Lord, amen, will have, so, well, that we will have Passover with his disciples. Yeah. Amen. You know, the Lord gives signs too, don't he? Yeah. Amen. He gives signs and, and he shows wonders and, and in the heaven above and the earth beneath. I believe even today the Lord is showing signs. And uh, if people are blind, they can't see what's going on. Amen. If they ain't read the word and believe what it says, why they don't even realize that the coming of the Lord is nigh at hand. Amen. I believe that, amen, uh, we're, amen, uh, fastly approaching the midnight hour when the Lord will return to gather His people to take them to the place He's prepared for them. Amen. 
they have a clock and they uh, they say, Amen, it's uh, a minute till midnight. They call it doomsday. Well, I want to say this tonight. Doomsday's coming on the uh, those that are unrepentant and those that are living a sinful lifestyle except they repent. But I'm looking for a glorious day when the Lord comes again to take His children home. Amen. Now, you know, if people choose, they can live a life of gloom and doom. And have you ever seen a person that they're just depressed and it's a spirit that gets a hold on people. I've had that spirit get on me and and it, amen, took the Lord to deliver me from it. The devil told me lies and made me believe I didn't have no hope. Amen. But my life was useless and it was there every day that I had to deal with it. Amen. And I had to face it till I didn't even really, amen, I, I didn't even, I wanted to go to heaven and, and get out of it all. But, amen, that ain't the Lord's will for us to carry such a burden around every day and, amen, contend with such things. He wants us to be a joyful people. He wants us to be a people, amen, that I can raise our hands to heaven and shout the praises unto the Lord and declare that I've been, amen, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've got victory in Jesus, I, that I'm no longer under the bondage of Satan, but I'm a child of God. But the Lord delivered me from that spirit of depression he did. Amen. When I thought I couldn't stand anymore, the Lord opened the door for me that I could escape that. And tonight, amen, a man could talk to you, a woman, whoever it would be, and try to, you know, you can go to people and they'll try to analyze what's wrong with you and they'll tell you, you know, you need to do this and that and the other, and you need to, you know, practice this or that. Or why well, they might even say, "Here's you some, here's you some medicine to take that it'll, uh, you know, work on your mind, and why well, you'll 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 think different and you'll feel different." Well, I can tell you this: the Lord can do something better than medicine can for you. He can set your mind free. He can liberate you. Amen. When the Lord set me free, did I ever, did that ever try to come back upon me? Yes, it did. But I'd have to re rebuke it in the name of Jesus. When I felt it coming upon me, I'd say, devil, I've been freed by the power of God. I'm a, amen. I've been set free. You get the hints in the name of Jesus, I won't tell him to get behind me. I don't want him back there because I, I don't have eyes in the back of my head, but I do have goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And with goodness and mercy back there, there ain't no room for the devil. Can you say amen tonight? Amen. If Jesus is walking with you and goodness and mercy is following you, as David said, the devil ain't got a place, amen, to even come, amen, into your company. But, you know, uh, I, I thought about that and, you know, depression that's not to say a person ain't saved and that, that's not to say that God ain't with them. That's just a, a, a spirit that it comes to torment. The devil comes to torment and he tormented me. For why I would go to school and I couldn't even sit there and think. I, 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 you know, other kids would be playing and having a good time and I was, amen, worried, sick and... and, and you know, and the devil tried to deprive me of my childhood. Amen. He, uh, amen. He thought I'll get him while he's young. I'll destroy him. I'll tear him down. Amen. But the Lord had other plans, and He's got other plans for everyone tonight. 
He's got great plans for you. He wants you to have the best tonight. And I claim that in Jesus' name. Well, the Bible said that Jesus told them that uh, when they saw this man burning a pitcher of water, that just to follow him into the house where he entered in. And he even told them what to say when they went in the house. He said that the, when, uh, amen, you meet the goodman of the house, say the master saith unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you an upper, a large upper room furnished there make ready, there make ready, preparing for the celebration, preparing for the feast of the Passover. Are we ready for that day when we will sit down at that table at the marriage supper of the Lamb and Jesus himself will serve us? Praise God. And we shall drink new wine on that day. Amen. Vine. Amen. Grapes that have been taken fresh from the vine and pressed. Amen. Into the cup. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, I believe that'll be wine like man's never tasted before when he sits at that table, the table of the Lord. Amen. And the Lord Himself serves us. Oh, you talk about a great day. It'll be a great day, won't it? Amen. I tell you what. Amen. The most beautiful things of this world cannot compare with what God has in store for His people. Praise the Lord tonight. And the Bible said they went and found as He had said unto them and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, He sat down and the twelve apostles with Him. Amen. And He said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So evidently, according to the word, he will also eat with us. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Amen. Well, even before Judas Iscariot left the table, the devil entered into him. Amen. Satan has tried everything he can to stop God's plan. Amen. From being fulfilled. And he has failed and he will fail. When Satan purposed to have us, every one of us, God had other plans, and He intervened. You could have been lost for eternity without God, but He stepped into the arrangements, amen, and made a way for you to escape, amen, the clutches of sin. Praise the Lord. I tell you, tonight there's no peace like the peace that God gives. You can lay on your bed and be troubled in your spirit by, amen, the powers of darkness that would press upon you. Amen. But when the peace of God comes in, it's a rest like no other to rest in the presence of God. There is a rest for the people of God. Amen. A rest like no other. And I believe, church, that even in this time when we, amen, struggle with the opposition against us, God will give us a place of rest. 
He will reassure us that He will be with us every mile of the journey, every step of the way. He said, I'll never leave you, neither will I forsake you, but I will go with you all the way even to the end. Amen. Amen. He said, believe me, what I'm telling you. Amen. I'm speaking, amen, words that you can hold on to, that you can believe in. And if it weren't true, I would have told you that too. Praise God. You know, Jesus told people the truth. He didn't just tell them something just to make them feel good. Amen. And then find out that it's just empty words. We're used to that, ain't we? Every year at election time, they promise us a snowball in July, and they never have delivered it yet, have they? Amen. Come on, church. They'll say, I'm going to do this for you, and I'm going to do that. They ain't going to do it. They ain't going to do it. Amen. But I tell you one that did promise us something, and he will fulfill what he said he would do. He's a man of his word. Can you say praise God tonight? Amen. My confidence is in the Lord tonight. My confidence is not in flesh. My confidence is in God. Praise the Lord. He'll never fail you and He never will. Can you say praise God tonight? I believe just as sure as He spoke the words, I'll go to prepare a place for you and will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, you can be also. I'm looking for him to come because he's coming back again. I don't know when, neither does any other man, but he's coming back very soon. Let not your heart be troubled, he said. Neither be afraid. What does perfect love do? He cast out fear. And the Bible said he didn't give you the spirit of fear. Well, then who gave you a spirit if it's a, a, a fear that grips you? It ain't God. Amen. The fear of God and the fear of other things is different. Yeah. The fear of God is to respect and acknowledge Him. Yeah. The fear that Satan, a man, puts up on you has torment. Yeah. Praise God tonight. But I'm glad that He set me free. Yeah. And whom the Son sets free, He is free indeed. Yeah. You know something? You don't have to go back under bondage. You can live your life free because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. That's where I want to be, in the presence of God because there's liberty where His Spirit is at. Amen. People need to be very careful what spirits that they allow to accompany them. I want the Spirit of God in my life. I, and there's one spirit, one true spirit of God. Satan has many spirits, but there's one true spirit of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. One faith, one baptism. There's not many. Amen. Amen. There's one. And even the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, though they be three, they agree in one. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't it good tonight? There's no confusion. Amen. In the word of God. Amen. Amen. It's as plain. Amen. That even a little child could understand it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He didn't make it so complicated that we couldn't live the way the word said. Amen. He made it so simple that we can all make it to heaven. Amen. Just accept him. And live by his word. Yeah. God bless you as our prayers as they sing. Hallelujah. A woman tried many positions, yet grew worse. So did Jesus. She came, and when the crowd
shield. Just believe when you call on his name. I was bound when I nailed at the altar. They said Jesus could meet my every need. When this prisoner finally touched Jesus, he set me free. Praise the Lord, free indeed. Touching Jesus. Is all that matters, and then your love will never be the same. There is only one way to touch Him. Just believe when you call on Him. When I knelt at the altar, they said Jesus would be my every need. When this prisoner finally touched Jesus, he set me free. Praise the Lord. Touching Jesus is all that matters. And then your love will never be the same. There is only one way to touch Him. Just believe when you call. 